day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. God bless you. I hope that you're having a <clears throat> great weekend and, and staying safe. Um, we, we really, uh, this is part A for the commentary for what we did today. The Bible study today was called, or well, the subject was called, Vain Glory. Is it worth losing your soul? <clears throat> and we, in, this, in the study, you'll see where some actually look up the definition of vain glory. And maybe some of you may be asking the question, what is vain glory? Uh, I call vain glory is where you're taking pride of your own accomplishments. And then when we take it from a bigger perspective, when we're talking about from racism, white superiority, or supremacy, or cock power, or even black power, is, is glorifying what we can accomplish in the world, in our flesh, instead of glorifying the things of God. The Bible says that God, uh, when we taught to pray, say His will be done. And so therefore we need to be able to operate with understanding that the only thing that really matters during our time here is how do we glorify God? How do we glorify Him? what we did or what we do, is it glorifying him? Or is it glorifying ourselves or our fellow man or our races? It's, it's not about what we can accomplish on our own ability, but it's what we accomplish in the will of God. The first script that we use today uh, was called the cost of discipleship. See, when I read this to you, and I, and I want to uh, make sure we get a good understanding here. Is that the cost of discipleship, what I'm talking about is if, and I, and I want to I make sure I can put the video, put the, uh, the slides on the screen for you. I want to put it, let me put a light, get over just a little bit, a little bit more. So there's so the, 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 uh, I try to, the scriptures will be on the, on the screen as we talk. And let me get back over here so I can make sure that you can put the scriptures to the side. Let me put a little bit more over here. <laughs> put them to the side so you can see the scriptures. Um, the scripture I'm going to talk about is Luke 14, 25. And before I read it, I just want to understand this. It, we as the United States of America, we profess that we are a Christian nation. We have freedom of religion. We allow other religions to be there. And, and that's Christ. God gives us free will. So therefore, we want to give people free will to choose, right? But, but the point is this, is that if we are Christian, we call ourselves a Christian nation, then we need to understand that it costs us something to be a Christian nation. It costs us as far as being a disciple of, of Jesus Christ. And these scriptures in Luke 14, 25 really kind of gives you a beginning of how we need to approach and how this discussion started off. This is in Luke 14, 25. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man comes to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, most people say that way, oh, he's talking about hate. Well, he's talking about the fact is that if I value my life 
and everything in this world above the, the, the love of God, then, then, then I can't be God's disciple. And that's one of the biggest things we get in trouble with anyway, when we try to love uh, this world's system and everything in it above the things of God. So you're saying that are you willing to, to, to get rid of that life? He ain't talking about carnal. See, that's the way we're talking spiritually. Spiritually, are we going to allow the life that we live to be put aside so we can live the life of God through Jesus Christ. Verse 27, who suffer does not bear his cross? Come on, see, that's what I'm talking about. And come after me, cannot be my disciple. Meaning dying to self. We can't die to ourselves. We can't die to the color of our skin. We can't die to our nation cannot be his disciple. And for those who heard what I just said, I'm saying is any nation, I don't care if you can, if you put any nation, anything above God, you missed the boat. Verse 28, for which of you attended to build a tower, sit us not down first and count this the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Less happily after he has laid the foundation, he is not able to finish it. And that behold, it begins to mock him. And, and behold, and all that behold it began to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. He said, if you want to be a Christian, and I don't know whether you've been baptized as a child or, or when you come in later in life, are you counting the cost? Are you ready to finish the race, like Paul said, the, the finish the race of faith. If you're not willing to finish that, you, 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 he's saying this, you know, the whole the world will mock you. If you come in here acting, the world's going to mock you. Verse 30 says, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish it. In the next verse, 31, or oh, what king going to war make against another king? Sit us not down first and consult us whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him that comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the others yet a great way off, he sent us an abyss and desires conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be a disciple. And I'm saying being a Christian and being Christians, we can't sit there and do, uh, we talk about racism, we can't sit there and say, I can't forsake being a, a, a white supremacist. I can't forsake being a, a dominant cop opposed to being a defender, a protector of our society. Not to pick out one particular race or another. Not if, even if you say, well, it's not about colors, about behavior. Then, if you're sitting there profiling people, you're sitting there approaching people, you don't know the right identity of the person, and you sit there and use violent behavior, aggressive behavior, as if you think you're going to change something with that, then you're not following Christ. You're not being a disciple of Christ. He said to love one another. And if you can't calculate that cost in your life as being a disciple of Christ, understanding that you have to not get to the point where you want to glorify your accomplishments or glorify a particular race accomplishment or glorify a particular nation's accomplishment or glorify a particular party's accomplishment. If you can't hate those things and give God more glory, then you didn't count the cost. And you don't understand the cost of being a disciple. And that's what discipleship is all about. So I hope you understand the video. We really talked about a lot of uh, things in this political world, this uh, Bible study. But I do believe that it's, it's worth discussions. And I think we should always try to do that. And that's the whole focus of the Bible study, is to, to try to apply the Word of God in our everyday life. And that means we have to confront things that are not acceptable in the will of God, when the eyes of God. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
And uh, we'll catch you in part B. And if in this particular study, we went, we went way over. Uh, I think we made almost 11 o'clock. So uh, I guess I'm having A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. But the main thing, I want to cut it up in segments so you can digest it, chill, and meditate on it. You're always welcome to come participate. You see the uh, scriptures, <coughs> you see the, bi the binder of their banner of them that says uh, we're in Zoom. You can also, you can easily dial into that and you're welcome to do so. And also we post these on uh, YouTube, so please subscribe, you know. Hey, let's get this gospel out. Let's get these discussions going. That's what it's all about. All right, I hope you enjoy your uh, week. This is the 28th of June. Uh, the next study we'll have will be on the 5th, I believe, uh, of July, or whatever day that Sunday is for that week. Um, stay safe and be blessed. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye. Jackson, Elder Johnson, how are you doing this morning? Doing well. How are you doing? Uh, just let you know what we was talking about. You hear me, Brother Jackson? I hear you, brother. Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I'm not in the RV this morning because I got it up in the air trying to get that fuel pump out of the uh, out of the RV. The uh, but when you guys came in, we was talking about the title I wanted to put in today. It, it's called uh, Bay Glory," and is it worth losing your soul? Um, so that's what we was talking about the protests, the, the police issues, uh, and the rewriting of history with the, the monuments and stuff like that. And, and we're saying there's a lot of cases, this stuff is all about uh, creating a narrative, creating an image, and then I'm saying those images is vain glory because it's trying to get a glory out of something trying to glorify actions and behaviors that is vain in itself, contradictory to the word and the will of God. You know what I mean? Yes. So so that that's what we was talking about. And we're gonna to continue to talk about that, but we, we it's better to go ahead and, and, and uh, since we got a good quorum is to uh, you know pray and then continue in Amen. the narrative you know what i mean yes okay so so uh minister in training there uh brother jackson go ahead and uh if you, if you mind give us a prayer to ask the holy spirit to come in and help us out amen uh dear father in heaven lord as always you are worthy to be praised honored and glorified and we come to you this morning humbly we come to you with all of our faults dear father uh, we come to you uh, trying to put self aside, dear Lord, and giving you uh, the honor and the praise and the attention that, that you deserve from, from us. Uh, we thank you, dear Father, for loving us first, loving us so much that you gave your only begotten son to live in this world, to suffer uh, in, in our place, to die in our place, dear Lord, but yet because of his victory uh, with death and the cross, uh, his blood, his shed blood that is poured upon us, those of us who believe in him, has given us back that relationship with you, that uh, direct relationship. And we thank you, Father, for loving us so much. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in this world and, and, and living inside of us, uh, reminding us as to who we are, your, your children, and that we should uh, show the light, that we should, we should be the examples that you want us to be, even in this crazy world. Dear Father, thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning and share this fellowship that we uh, may learn more about your word, learn more about the relationship that we are to have with you, and then let us take it out into the world, dear Father, and display that relationship and be bold with it. Father, we thank you for the message that you have for us this morning regarding vain glory. Uh, we're all probably guilty of it, but help us, dear Lord, to, to again, humble ourselves that the glory not be ours, but be yours. We say these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Matter of fact, what, one of the things I'm going to go ahead and just we'll start off with the scripture uh, that I wanted to start, you know, go with uh, is right here. 
I'm sharing it with you. Uh, the, the, the cost of discipleship, meaning what, what, what does it cost you to call yourself really Christians? Everything. What does it cost you cost to, to, to be a follower of Jesus Christ in the midst of this day and time? And we're going to talk about the continue on, brother Addison. Matter of fact, I, I, I forgot to tell you that the story is not only subject is not only vain glory, but is it worth losing your soul? You know, that that's part of the title. And I I like Elder Johnson because I know he he got some a good perspective in it as well. Is to read. Uh, let me make sure I got it in there. Yeah. 1433. Yes, sir. Sorry. Elder, I'm so sorry. I, it, it starts at 25. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The, the, can I read 33? Yeah. One second. Okay. Okay. You got to back it up to the top. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And there went out a great multitude with him, and he turned and said unto him, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intend tending to build a, a tower sit it not down first and count out the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Right, and then the next one is what you're reading. Go ahead. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulted whether he be able to with 10,000 to meet him that cometh with cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, while the others yet are far off, he sitteth in amnesty and the desired conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Yeah, what, what, from that, what do you get out of that? I think it means exactly what it said. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It means exactly what it said. If it's any you left for you, you can't be his. You can't be his disciple. Right. It, it requires what we would normally say we would call fanaticism. I, I'll tell you the greatest example that I've seen of, of this kind of relationship with a with the person that you're following, a, a disciple and this, and this teacher. Is the guy that flew the planes into the, the buildings in, in in New York? I mean, uh, the Twin Towers. These guys were committed. They were totally committed to whatever the cause was. Right. And, and, and we would call them religious fanatics or whatever it was, but we saw the kind of fanaticism that it takes to accomplish what we we're supposed to be doing. And their fanaticism, in my opinion, was to the wrong God. I think that what they did was just a waste of their lives because the debt had already been paid by the man, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, but they were willing to physically die to accomplish what they thought was needful. And I think there's a level of fanaticism that we have to have concerning this man, Jesus. Yeah, but Brother Elder, um, you know, what they did also had to do with uh, hate. So, you know, I don't, I, me personally, I wouldn't put that into in the same in the same light. They did a lot of that out of out of hate. Whereas what we would do if we were to give up ourselves, uh, you know, totally, it would be out of love and out of a service to God the Father, and out of uh, out of our relationship, our direct relationship, you know, based on what you know Jesus has has um, taught us and commanded us. You know what I mean? I agree with you hundred percent. The fervor that they went at is the thing that becomes for me the the, uh, the point. These guys were willing to sell out to kill somebody. Are we willing to sell out to love somebody? And that's what he requires of us. Love your enemy, bless them that curse you, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. If you ask him to go to one mile, go to twain, but take you to the law and sue you for your cloak, give them your coat also. So the things that he tells us to do, we have to aggressively go after them, just like these guys aggressively went after destroying somebody. I was just toward the end of bringing an important life to somebody. The 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 the, uh, the tactic is different, but the approach 
it should be. I think it has to be, and I think that's what the scripture says. It has to be done with the same intent, intensity, the same devotion, the same fanaticism in a sense. Can you fanatically love somebody? Can you, you know, with everything that you got in you, go after this thing that Christ has called to? Can you forgive like that? Can you bless like, can you give, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like you gotta have the same kind of energy, except not the same kind of energy that they had from a destructive perspective, but the same kind of positive energy. We have to impute that if it costs us our lives. And I think that's what he did. He, he showed us, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. These were the people that were crucifying him. This was a fun, this was a determination like none other we've seen. <laughs> hey, Al, because you know, it's funny when he said that, I'll look at the fact is that when we, we do become and seek to be Christians, is I, I was getting from the scriptures that to calculate the cost of saying I really have to deny the life that I came from to a life of living that is acceptable to his will, not my will. And 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 and, and I and I want to tie that in to Brother Addison about the fact that if it is vain glory when we try to glorify ourselves instead of a a life that's that's denying self, denying what people think is is worthy to where he said to to hate this this formal self, this formal way of living, this formal way of seeing yourself, you know? He said to count the cost and understand is, don't, don't, don't step into this and understand and believe that you're gonna stay with your old ways, you know? There, you, there is. He said, he said, he said, in fact, Christ said is, he gave his life for the world not for the world to be as it was not for your life to be as it was but for your life to conform to an image that is what god pictured us to be right you know like in romans 12 what 12 2 be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind in other words to become a christian is to be transformed to the image that is acceptable to God. And when I talk about vain glory, the part is that when we was talking, Chris, we, you came in, we was talking about, and I said the title is called Vain Glory, and it's worth losing your soul. When we talk about the, the, the monuments that are being torn down now, is because somebody wrote a narrative of these people who were rebels right? These people who fought against this country, these people who fought for slavery and, 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 and another way of living, and, and they lost. <laughs> they lost that war. Uh, matter of fact, they even started the war. Is that correct, Brother Asher? I think they started the war, right? Yes. The, yes. The, first, the first shot was on Camp Sumter or something like that. Fort, Fort, Fort Sumter. Fort Sumter. Fort and, Sumter. And then, and then the attack went all the way to DC. <laughs> yeah, they did a they, they were very successful in that first attack too. They could have kept on going. They, they would have took the capital out. But the bottom line is they wanted to secede from the Union and establish the state's rights. And 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 it sounds like a noble thing when it says state rights, right? But the problem was those states' rights mean the rights to have slaves and the right to abuse slaves, the right to oppress slaves. That That is what they were fighting for. And somebody else can sit there and say, son, no, they won't fight. Yes, they were fighting for that. Yeah, that's all they were fighting for because that was the resource that they needed to sustain the revenue Yes, sir. that they were getting. Without right. the slaves, they could not sustain the revenue yes. that was being generated by them. And so that's that was their their that was their resource. Yes, sir. even though the, the, the cotton was a resource, the slaves was a resource for them to actually 
uh, develop that that cotton, you know, to gather it to to do what it was needed, cultivate right. the it field. Was an economic and engine. And yeah. anytime you can get free labor, you know, who's going to turn that down? But free labor is, is normally volunteer. We yes, call sir. it volunteer work. Right. You know, you you do it on your own initiative. Right. You know, not not forced. You know, yeah. and the yeah. sad thing is, they're doing it with these folks in prison. Right. Exactly. You know, so yeah. it's it's just another form yep. of 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 slavery. And uh, you got the the police. They are doing nothing different than they were doing back in these times. The militias, right? They yeah. are gathering up so-called slaves, people of color, and incarcerating them so that they can be free labor. Right. You know, and um, and it's it, and we look at the police, but it's it's far greater than that because you have the district attorney and you have the judges. Now, if they are showing data that they are they are indifferent and that they are not they're, that they're biased to people of color than they are to Caucasian folks that for the same crime, people of color are getting sentenced longer. You know, and are, are 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 being sentenced to begin with. They're not getting a slap on the hand. You know, uh, of course, they're not in a position to have a high cost lawyer to get them out of situations and circumstances, which is basically cutting a deal so that they could just pay, right? Pay the courts. You know, so they're buying their freedom, and it's 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 our our. It's our our jur the the Prudence, yeah, yeah. It's just corrupt. The whole yeah. system is corrupt. From the from the judges, well, let me correct that. From our political uh, officers, our politicians, all the way well from our president. <laughs> let me let me start there. From the president to those who are in the the, the Senate, the House all through government from uh, Washington down to local government. And then you get into the courts and then the attorneys and then the police. All that stuff is corrupt. All that stuff is, is pretty much geared toward keeping people of color in a position to where things are, are, are much more harder to achieve. Right. Let me ask you a question. Because when we think about it, that the system was corrupt and that it was geared against black people initially. When we, when we look at it as an economic institution and slavery as being a source of cheap labor, then all of it makes sense depending on what your, your heart, where your heart is at. It, it, it was an efficient method of doing business. But we also look at during the Civil War, there were over 400, 400 was it, seven, 700,000 men that were killed during the Civil War, that were white. How does that play in as far as just the racism thing? Is it just a racist thing or is it is there something that's driving it? Because when I look at the number of deaths that we experience in the country, we have 40 killings in making in a, in a year. We have 40 killings in some areas in their white on white crimes in just a few minutes. So what there seems to be something that's fighting against us across the board to kill both blacks and whites. And the camouflage seems to be to kill us against each other. Because yeah. 700,000 dead folk, dead white men in the Civil War didn't sound like victory to me. The only okay. thing they got was statues, a song, and that was about it, in a grave <laughs> with a mark and, on it. And, that, and that's what I call vain glory again. And, 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 and brother, uh, Chris, we were saying that the, uh, years ago we was talking by the people who fought, the minions who fought in that war, was only fighting for uh, the water fountain. That's now, I think so as of now, a brother and a sister-in-law knows we talk about that water fountain, Chris, that, that I, I, I got somebody to look down to me, right? In other words, it was 
back in those days is you're supposed to keep your eyes down to the ground if you were a slave and you 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 had to walk to the back uh, uh, to get into into a place. In other words, you had to be subservient to even poor white people, and and they were fighting for that vain glory, you know. And and when we read those scriptures, I wanted to show you the Christ said is because they still wanted Chris to keep that title of saying they're Christians. <laughs> and and brother, you see, what I'm saying, brother Addison. You you yeah. wanted to, you wanted to say I'm a Christian, but if you go with those scriptures we just read, he said if you don't deny yourself and fall into my will, then then you 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 basically just like that king or who he said remember those two examples he gave who would go build a tower, and then I first calculate all the things needed to build a tower. Or who will go to war and not count and make sure they got sufficiency to win the war? And if they realize they don't have enough, they'll go and say, hey, look, hey, man, let's not fight. Let's talk about peace, right? Well, the same thing I'm talking about when you talk about vainglory, racism, uh, slavery, and all those other things. Because don't forget, y'all, we do have some modern day slavery also down in the, on the border or where those concentration camps, that's what I called the other day. Chris, right now, people in a fenced area, um, mm -hmm. almost standing room only, outside. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's like almost like a concentration camp. Yeah. And that, we we, we kind of <laughs> forgot that that was going on down there, but it's still happening. Yeah, you won't see that in the news. Mm -hmm. Not no more. It's, <laughs> it's like <laughs> atrocities on you for a season, even though they continue to exist, there's more things that just keep happening. There's some things, yep. Yeah. Otherwise, people try to keep changing the page, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's intentional. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah.